Hey, Matthew here from FiberglassSupply.com. In this video, we're gonna show you how to install a standard longboard fin box using a glass patch under the box to help reinforce it. Enjoy the video, and we'll see you on the other side. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna double check that our setup is gonna to cut to the right depth. We want it to cut just past that little tab on top of the box there. Uh, so that we've got a little bit of resin left underneath it to glue the box to the board. That's gonna be about an inch deep. Next, I'm marking off on the board where we're going to set the jig. That's five and a half inches from the tail. It's pretty standard, but you can move it around depending on what you're trying to accomplish. I'm affixing the jig here to the board using some masking tape. That'll just keep it from moving around. And then once we've got that set in place, we'll, we'll begin routing. We're using a plunge router. We're going to route down about a quarter of an inch per pass. And I'm going to route the stringer down first and then route the whole perimeter out. In this case, I have a pretty long bit on this router. I have a two and a half inch cutting edge, which is overkill. Um, but if you've got a one inch cutting edge, you may want to actually route the perimeter before you're at full depth because you may be below uh, the cutting level of that bit at that point. So again, we're just dropping down a quarter of an inch at a time, removing the stringer area. What happens if we go too deep and work around the stringers, we're going to pick up bits of that stringer and we're going to shoot them into the board. So you notice the dust that comes off of there, it tends to collect at the ends and it blocks the router from going all the way. So you want to just keep an eye on that and make sure you get that cleaned out. Before we do the final pass, what I'll do is I'll make sure that's clean and we'll do the final pass so that we're at the right length. Again, just shallow quarter inch deep passes, work that stringer out, take your time, no need to hurry this part. All right, so now that we've got this almost done here, I'm doing the perimeter, and then what you'll see is I'm gonna clear out that jig a little bit and do one final pass. A better way to build this jig would have been to put some relief cuts at those ends so that the dust falls down in those and doesn't get in the way of the router. So, you know, if you're building a jig, consider doing that. Uh, maybe in another video we'll, we'll show some jigs that have that in it. So, then you want a final pass there, just making sure it's all good. I'm going to drop the box in, make sure it fits, and now we're going to remove that jig. So once we've got that jig removed, we're going to clean up uh, the dust and we're going to test fit the box to full depth. In this case, I did actually sand the box down a little bit because it was kind of tight. Uh, and <clears throat> once we're happy with that and we got it all cleaned up, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tape around that hole. There's a couple of reasons we're going to tape around the hole. One is we're going to get some excess resin come out of that uh, fin box install. We want that to be on the tape and not on the board. Uh, it also makes it easier to clean it off the excess and work it around. And then the second reason is it gives us a safety barrier so that when we're sanding down the top of that box to get it flush if we get off a little bit we'll hit the tape. So here I'm cutting the fiberglass patch that's going to go under there. This patch does a couple of things for us. It reinforces the hole that the box is in. And then the other thing that it does is it provides a wicking action that holds the resin in there so we don't have to use any thickener in the resin. Uh, it'll just hold right in place like it's supposed to and give us a nice install in the box. We'll do a couple other videos where we show different ways of installing boxes or different boxes that use a putty or, or other methods. So we've mixed up a little bit of resin here. In this case, this is a, an EPS cord board. So we're using an epoxy resin. We put a little bit of white pigment into it. And what we'll do now is we'll get that patch over it and quite simply just push the uh, box down into it. We want to get enough resin in the bottom of that hole so that there's some excess and it pushes all the way up. Uh, what I'm doing here though is I'm, I'm going around it and I'm putting a little bit more on there. Like I said, the fabric will wick the resin and hold it in place. And so over on that back side, I'm cleaning up some excess. You probably want to put a quarter inch or so of resin in the bottom of that hole before you push the box in. You do want to make sure that you get enough resin wick up on that fabric uh, that it's above the top edge of the box because later we're going to come in with a razor knife and we're going to trim that. Uh, if there's dry fabric there, the problem is if we try to grind it, it's going to dust up and, and do these nasty things. So again, the resin's cured now and we're coming through with the utility knife. We're just trimming off all the dry fiberglass on top that leaves wet out fiberglass. 
You see the excess resin there on the board, it's on the tape, so it's not a big deal. Uh, once we're done grinding, we just pull that off. So once it's cured and we've trimmed off the excess fiberglass, we're using a grinder here with an 80 grit pad. You can actually go rougher, we just happen to have 80 grit in the shop. Uh, 50 or 60 grit would actually work better. And so we're carefully uh, taking that down a little bit at a time. You can't leave the grinder in one place for too long because the plastic will get hot and soften and it doesn't sand as well. That's also the reason for using a higher grit like a, or a lower grit like a 50 or 60 grit uh, that's rougher because it'll actually cut cooler. So once we've got that down flush, we're going to remove the tape. <clears throat> and what I was checking right there with my thumb real quick, I did hit the tape with the grinder and the tape did its job. Uh, we didn't mark up the board. Now I'm coming through with a, a sander that's got 80 grit paper on it and I'm actually going to sand the rest of the board. Uh, so what we're doing here is just you know finishing getting that box down and flush and blending that with, with the other areas of the board. So we get this call a lot, hey I've got my fin box in, I don't know how to get the fin in to the slot. Uh, as you can see in the middle of the box right there, there's a tab. Sometimes in the process of installing the box, you'll grind low enough that that tab comes off. Other times it stays in place. As you can see here, it's still there, uh, it's in place. So once you're ready to install the fin, what you'll do is you'll take a utility knife and you'll just carefully cut that tab out. All right, once that little tab of plastic's out of the way, we can take our slider plate and get it down in there. It can be a little tricky getting that slider plate in, but it slides down and then kind of rotates, um, I don't know, 60 degrees or so until it's in the groove and then it'll move up and down. So once that's in, we can set the fin in and then line up the screw hole in the fin with the slider plate and tighten it down. That is pretty much it. That is a fin install right there. We've got this fin in the board. We know it fits good. On this particular board, we have some more sanding to do before it's going to be ready to take out and use. Uh, but There's the process to install a longboard fin box using the glass patch method. If you have any questions about what we did in this video, please feel free to give us a call or leave a comment below. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more like that, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much, and we'll see you soon.